can we harmonize? Hit a note. When everything is little clear, clear and and the What the light fuck up. was that? You I gotta find the note. That. I don't know where you're coming in at. <laughs> All right, you come right. in at your note. Tell me what note you're gonna come Jason. at. Go, Jason. go, Travis. We're gonna do this right now. Say <laughs> when, 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 when. when. All right, let's get it. That's it. I got it now. How do you know when. how to do this? Welcome back Woo! to New Heights. Woo-hoo, the energy is high. A Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Ooh, he hit the bingadooly. The- bingadooly. <laughs> uh, New Heights is a show that loves a good old fourth quarter comeback, baby. <laughs> we had two of them this Sunday. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights. Ohio went to the University of Cincinnati. Bearcats, baby. Um, new Heights comes out every Wednesday. We got a new episode for you. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show. Jason, what we got for today? Trev, got a great episode coming up. That's right. <laughs> We're going to recap your primetime hat trick. All the right, Eagles. Now. Fourth quarter wild comeback. And my favorite part of the episode, we're going to talk turkey. Including, turkey. we're going to have the first ever official turkey bowl draft. New Heights Ooh. style. You guys aren't going to want to miss this. We got some yeah. good picks. But first, as always, as always. it's time for new news. new news. Still the number one sports podcast in the world on Spotify. <laughs> Thank you for tuning yeah. in every week. Man, you guys are awesome, man. Dang, Let's get to some of so the biggest fun. news, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. We got him. He's <laughs> locked in. Pat Mahomes, the Woo! quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. Pat Mahomes. He's coming on our show. That's pretty crazy. Mr. 2 p.m. himself. It, it, Pat it took everything to make it happen. I mean, we basically had to grovel on Twitter. It was um, a grovel? <laughs> G-R. G-R-A-V. Is Have you never like, heard the word gravel? Is it like vault, like uh, like a pole vault, v- V-A-U, gravel? No, I've never heard of that. What the fuck does that mean? You've never heard the word gravel? No. Gravel to somebody? Like you're like... Grappled, you're... like you're grappling. All right. Anyways, <laughs> we basically had to beg him to come onto the show. Um, beg? I was... I was doing a lot of groundwork. <laughs> you didn't do anything. <laughs> no Twitter problem. had to do all the work for you. What? Travis, we saw, we, we saw what happened... Live. Everyone saw it. What do you mean? Twitter is, it's documented. Elon Musk has it documented on the Twitter servers. You were too nervous to ask anybody. So we had too to go nervous? to. We, yeah, we had to rely on Twitter to get Pat on our show. And luckily, My hands are Twitter, sweating came right through. Now Thank you very it. much. Um, we had some great tweets back and forth. Uh, I figured out how to post a GIF, which I did Dude, not Dude, you're having, you're having a blast on Twitter right now. Well, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy how quick... They didn't have uh, GIFs. They didn't have GIFs when the, the, the last the time the you were on Twitter. The previous Twitter time, <laughs> GIFs were not as uh, popular. Is it GIF or GIF? What do you say? I'm going GIF. Why GIF? You, you eat know. GIF peanut butter, too? No, nah, I, I know a guy named Gifford. That's a J. And... And his name is spelled G-I-F. So I'm just going with GIF. GIF just isn't a, as cool of a word as GIF. <laughs> Either way, man, you are prime. And it looks like you only have one follower right now. You're only yeah. following one person. I'm only following my brother Travis. So, and, um, <laughs> you're not even kinda... following the show. That's We need to fucking get you following the show, Jason. Am I following the show? If you only have one follower and it's me. I know it's in my bio. I should probably follow. Oh, it. there you go. Yeah, you should probably. I follow just it. don't. I don't have a feed. I don't do the whole feed thing. I <laughs> that's don't. The point really... of Twitter, Jason. No, that's Twitter not what feed. I'm using it for. I'm just using it to have fun. So yeah. what are you? So where are you getting your? You're just searching it, huh? Yeah. If I want to know something, I hit the search bar, find it out. You do a little it. type of roo. Yeah, I mean, it is the hell of a search engine. We already talked. Or about I go this. to Google. You, it, you get you get the best responses when you use that search engine, man. Yeah. The best no, you tweet. find stuff. Out. I don't want to know stuff from people that I already know what they're going to say. I don't want to. <laughs> sounds boring. I'm not using no feed. You're ridiculous, man. I feed myself. I don't want some Autobot feeding me information. 
the old algorithms. She's killing it on Twitter, though, man. I, I was uh, the gifts killed it. The responses yeah. killed it, and then yeah. you pushed you pushed Twitter to basically force Pat to be on the show, yeah. which was I mean, it was listen, epic. if you want to apply pressure, you, you know, there's nothing like millions of people on a social media platform to you know kind of uh, you know force a guy's hand. So, uh-huh. Pat, thanks for coming on the show. I can't wait. It's going to be a great episode. I, uh, I've only God, met what Pat a, guy, a few man. times. I haven't really got the chance to sit down and have a, a meaningful conversation with him, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's a hard guy to like stop and have a conversation because whenever I see somebody ultra famous, which I would consider Pat, he's in that category, right? One hundred percent. That guy can't go anywhere. He's a, he's like a he's got like that. I don't want to say cartoon character, but he's got like that like like superhero like look where his hair the face the height the body like you see that and you're like damn that's pat mahomes and then people go crazy and then it's yeah. like a you know what i mean like he has to have a bodyguard you know what i mean i could walk around kansas city and like oh look at that there's travis and it's just like hey like i'm like the friendly neighbor mr yeah. rogers or something you know pat no he's getting swarmed like like jordan like michael jackson like all the yeah. big time celebs so like whenever I've met him, whenever I meet people like that, I get nervous. I don't even want to talk to him. I don't like want to. I don't want to hold you up, man. Hey, I yeah. just want to shake your hand. It's nice to see you, yeah. dude. Good to see you, Pat. But yeah. so it'd be that cool to actually have a conversation with him. He naturally just has a like fast forward button. Fast forward all button? times. Yeah, he's what do you just mean? just very minds he's got going. ADD? Um, no, I th- I think he's a very focused individual. I don't know if his mind is ra- like racing like that, but he is going at a. More rapid pace. Neurons are firing. I mean, it makes sense. It, Neurons it are is. firing. One hundred percent. Do you find that people that talk faster are also like run fast? One thousand percent. Tyreek Hill. I agree. Speaks extremely Look, fast. Tyreek you have Hill the brain. Is, it's hard to, to be it's hard moving to like, that fast. Your yeah. brain has to be working so much faster. Yeah. If your brain sends signals to your mouth that fast, <laughs> it sends signals to your legs that fast too. I think it all is connected. It's a chain. I some of the Did people that just... if if I hear a fast talker, I'm like. That's going to be a good receiver. <laughs> <laughs> or DB. Steve Smith. I have not met Talks many DBs, receivers that have got the, that low drag. Oh, I'm just going to no, go out you there. Gotta, you just got to meet the right ones, man. Oh, they're out there? Oh, yeah, for sure. They're, they're usually like around Give me an like example. That. Uh, Charvarius Ward. He was with. He was in Kansas City forever. I think he's from like the Arkansas area or like somewhere kind of south where it was like they just kind of just – they go at a different pace down there, <laughs> you know. All right, well, that's not how he talks, by the way. I wasn't impersonating Tervey. No, you were you were impersonating a Southern slow drag. I got what you're. Yeah, doing. you already know. All right, well, what do we want to talk to Pat about? Man, we got ah. him on the show. We're gonna ask him anything. It's a good is question, anything, man. Is there anything you want to talk to him about that you are too nervous to talk about outside of being? How does that? How does being on camera and on a show change the interaction between you and uh, Pat? Do you think it's good? Um, I mean, I've been on numerous uh, shows or interviews where I've done with Pat, and I just yeah, I think it's going to be a fun interview. I think just it's telling the uh, yeah, just telling the stories. Um, I think is probably the best because uh, he's a pretty good storyteller. Um, and I really want to. I'm intrigued to get to know more about kind of how he studies the game. I think that's fascinating to me. Okay. Because I've seen the notebook. I've seen him jotting down all this stuff. And I want to know how he makes it make sense. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's fascinating to me. Because everybody sees the backyard football aspects of him just being able to go out there and ball. But it's like we talked about earlier. It's all calculated decisions because of how much film, how much confidence this guy gets from all the information he's accumulated in in his football life. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. I think that that'd be cool to get in his brain and at least hear, you know, how he got to the point of being able to, you know, study football. You know, who he, who were his mentors? Who kind of gave him that golden ticket or a golden that, that golden nugget for him to be able to make it make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm 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 fired up to talk to, talk some ball with my guy at two p.m. Man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where it's gonna go, but I'm excited about it. I'm just excited to talk to somebody as uh, smart uh, and. Uh, I don't know, as successful. and yeah. uh, He's an honor student, man. That's one thing you guys got in common, honor students, honor students. oldest child. Yeah, I mean. 
Honors classes, I should say. Yeah, I took honors classes. I wouldn't say I was an honors student. I was uh, on a roll one one semester in college. <laughs> I made dean's once list. Once upon a time. <sighs> it's not hard to make dean's list when you're a criminal justice major. All right, where are we going here? We got... What? <laughs> um, is Pat the most famous person in your phone? Man, now that's a good question. Um... Who, do you ask, who else you got? Who else you working with? <laughs> We're really going to go down who's in my phone right now? What well, the mean, fuck? I would have to look yeah. it up, man. I don't even know. I, mean, I probably changed, got Mark uh, Sanchez, changed numbers. Maybe? I don't even know. <laughs> Mar- I'll Sanchez. probably go Miles Teller. Miles Teller. I think it's the f- most famous person in my phone. I mean, yeah. I could I could double Top down gun. on that. Justin Timberlake. All right. JT. I mean, this isn't even like a competition. The Tennessee kid. He's in your phone, though. Yeah, he actually uh, texted me. He was he was drinking some wine watching this game, this past game. He said he was all fired up. Yeah. I got JT, yeah. man. You, you would have wine drinkers watching football games texting you. All right, well, now we can't put this in here. Why the fuck? I would just, <laughs> I would just cut his knees off like that, man. What the fuck are we? Who drinks wine and watches football? It's Sunday night. He was probably by a soccer. fire. This is not soccer. A... Some people have preference on the type of beverage they like to have. All right. Let's get to the show. Come on. Let's get it going. Fan mentions of the week. Always a fun segment here from you guys. Please keep them coming. From at Miss Kate Davis 14. Sarah Kate on Twitter. Uh, Important question uh, for next week. What is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish slash dessert? Oh, man. I know mine. The one and only. Yeah, if we're going with the most obvious, it's the Mama Kelsey (laughs) Uh, cinnamon sugar marshmallow filled dinner rolls have Ew. been a s- Kelsey staple. So uh, buttery. So yeah. buttery. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. You got to catch them while they're hot. And if you do, you might burn your tongue. Because... I mean, they're definitely better hot, but I'll eat those things cold. I mean, it's ridiculous how good those <laughs> things are. I'm not going to lie. God, God. They, don't, they yeah. never last. They sh- Mom usually makes like three batches of them, and the first two are gone before we even think about eating our uh, Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. They're they're quick hitters. Um, if I'm going something outside of that, that's a staple at probably everybody's Thanksgiving. I go green green bean casserole. I think it's a very underrated dish. <laughs> the old casserole, huh? Dude, green bean casserole, oh, that's man. That's good shit. I'm a huge the, fan. Uh, the classic of that, white mom Thanksgiving meal casserole. I'm, no, this isn't. <laughs> yeah, mashed potatoes and corn. I mean, there's so many good choices. What, what are you going? Mashed potatoes. I'm, I've always been out on mashed potatoes. Um, you're the picky. You're the picky eater. We, we yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I remember countless Thanksgiving meals where yeah. we'll, we'll get into just... it later. We're gonna get into it later. <laughs> we're gonna get into that I later. Knew, I knew you were saving it, man. You knew what it was. You knew what we were gonna talk about. I don't want to eat it, and I don't like it. Be thankful. This is the this is the Grinch of Thanksgiving that we're on the show with right now. <laughs> Because I'm a picky eater, I'm just the worst. You're the fucking worst kid on Thanksgiving. <laughs> there are starving kids. I was, I was in- thankful for the rolls, Mom. <laughs> I was thankful for the rolls. Those were delicious. It's not oh my, my fault gosh. I don't love mashed potatoes. Eat the stuffing. We're going to get to it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what else do we got? Um, <laughs> growing up with... Thanksgiving a big holiday in the Kelsey household. Um, Yeah, I think it was a it was big because you know we um, we made it ours. You know we have we didn't have a really big family. You know it was just really the four of us and uh, and you know an aunt and an uncle. Um, Yeah, we had some family friends that we would do it with occasionally. Grandpa came in one year, I think. Uh, But you know it was definitely. You know, we just don't have a big family, but it was yeah. big in our household, and it was it one was. of the few times we sat at the very large, nice dining room table that yeah. we had and actually ate food together. That the um, only time I ever recall actually doing that. It was a rare occasion when we and that always like that. made it like an event. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that exactly. One hundred percent. That it was. It was a little bit different than going to the coffee table that literally would come up. <laughs> The, My, our friends would come over and make fun of us. So we had a coffee table that had like a top that would fold up to your face so that you could just eat your dinner right here in front of the on TV. On the couch. Yeah. It was the best fucking thing ever. Are you kidding yeah. 
I mean, it was that great. table was the best. It was awesome. I wish saw a lot I'd of good actually, sitcoms might... and uh, game shows right there in front of us while we ate dinner every night. You know it. You know it. Um, Watch Dad try and get every Jeopardy question right and fail miserably. Fail? He used he to was knock okay. him out. He used to knock him out. He knocked he out knock some out. of them. He yeah. knocked out some of them. You, if he got a good topic, he'd roll through it. You're right. We'll get to more Thanksgiving stuff uh, later on in the episode, but now it's time to tee up 12 bold topics to wrap up week 11 in the NFL. Um, obviously, we'll talk about more stuff than just our games, but uh, typically it goes Jason will tee up topics on my game, and I'll do the same for his, and then we'll uh, run down some other uh, topics throughout the league. We'll get back to the show in just one second, but uh, one last piece of new news. It's November, which means it's National Veterans and Military Families Month which is why our sponsor DraftKings and the Pat Tillman Foundation have partnered together to give you an easy and fun way to give back and make an impact. All you have to do is sign up on DraftKings using your promo code New Heights, enter their Pat Tillman free-to-play pool through November, and DraftKings will donate $1 for every entry, up to 20000 to the Pat Tillman Foundation. And these donations go towards some incredible initiatives, like empowering military veterans and spouses through academic scholarships. Again, just sign up using your promo code New Heights, Play in DraftKings' Pat Tillman free-to-play pool, and DraftKings will donate $1 for every entry to the Pat Tillman Foundation. All right, let's get back to the show. Jason, go ahead and start us off. I heard it was a crazy one for the Chiefs. (laughs) It sure was, Trav. Chiefs 30, Chargers 27 on Sunday night football. it was a close one. That's what you like to see. That's the kind of game you want to see on Sunday night, primetime game. That's why they flexed it. Let's start with that game-winning drive. Chargers up four with 146 left. Camera cuts to Pat. He's smiling. And, uh, Trav, what are you thinking? I mean, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I think what everybody thinking that game was thinking, that you guys are going to go down and score. That's what it felt like. It felt like a very comfortable situation. Um, I feel like uh, we kind of talked about this earlier, about situational football, right? And, and, and both end of, ga- end of half, end of game situations where the t- clock is running out. Um, got to get a score. Obviously, four them being up four means we got to score a touchdown. Um, two timeouts was the big one for me. You give us you give us a bunch of timeouts or more than one timeout to be able to uh, because now we can utilize the middle of the field more, right? Right. Yeah. You're and not limited the, to the and that's line. the and that's huge. That's big time. Now Pat can but use his legs. Is a lot of time, even if yeah. you don't have timeouts. 100 percent especially when you got Patrick Mahomes and like you said a camera cut to him he seemed very comfortable very comfortable very confident in the situation it's just you you accumulate all this data and all these all these like football you know situations that you've seen and and you know what's possible right you know what's possible with the amount of time we have and uh, on top of that you know we knew that they were going to play man-to-man coverage they had been they had gotten us a lot throughout the game they just that that was their go to when it, uh, the game was on the line, third downs, uh, later on in the game in the third man. quarter, second quarter. Yeah, they were going man, and twenty two um, man, twenty two man on some plays for sure. The last play yeah. where I scored, it was a uh, man robber. So they mm. went, they went, they had two uh, two guys in the red zone, kind of eye and pat. Sure, I think uh, like you said, man, it was um, or like we said earlier, it was just a comfortable situation, man, and uh, you know you would you'd like to have that much time. That's for damn sure. If you if you give me one forty six left to win a win a football game uh, to try and score a touchdown, I mean I'm I'm taking that all day. Yeah, man, he's Pat is so good in these situations. He's proved it time and time again. Uh, watching that game, I thought without question you guys are going to go down and score, um, and it didn't disappoint. You guys yeah. marched right down the field. Um, it was a, the biggest you know, thing in a situation like that is that first play. You need to have a positive first play or first or second play. And it ha- and typically if you can get 15 to 20 yards on that first play, man, that is a dagger to a defense. It's a big one. And that's what happened. We we hit uh, Marquez down the sideline, jumped us off. I think it was a 15 to 20 yard gain and then Sky Moore came up huge yet again. Uh the young guy, our rookie wide receiver who um who kind of stepped up in a position cuz uh Kadarius Tony went down um came up big came up big man it's uh it's always good to see guys step into roles because you typically when you're stepping into a role you're you don't have the same practice reps as a guy that was running those plays or the the guy that w- those plays were made for right. you know what i mean like you yeah. just don't get those reps mm-hmm. so it's like 
your attention to detail or your understanding and your your awareness yeah, throughout the week. It's just a little bit less. Yeah, it's just a little bit. But for him to be able to come in and just absolutely come up big for us in those situations, man, and then one five making it work with his legs during the two man situation, it was um it was a flawless flawless uh, execution by one five man, and it was uh, it was fun to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about stepping uh, into a role? Let's talk about a guy whose role uh, is no longer with the team. He was uh, watching the game as well. My man Cheetah got the hey, shout out the for. Cheetah. For Trav on uh, on Twitter, said, name a better tight end. I'll wait. A little smiley face. My guy, Tyreek Hill. What, I um, mean, it's the best wide receiver in the National Football League. I've been saying it for 10-plus years, however yeah. long he's been in the league. Um, that's yeah. one of the things I've been really happy for you guys and the offense. I mean, that's a huge person to, to lose. And you know, It's a lot of production, man. That's yeah. a lot of production, and, and it's a lot of focus in terms of the, the offense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Our, a lot of our plays have been developed because they were Tyreek Hill kind of routes. And, um, yeah, it's been fun. You know, I love Tyreek. And, I, you know, I was I was a little butthurt when he when he left. But at the same time, it was, you know, it was a decision that I definitely could understand him to make. Um, yeah. And he's still the one of the best, if not – well, I'll take that back. He's still the best wide receiver in the National Football League, man. Well, he said name a better tight end, and I'll name one right now. Kylie Kelsey has the best tight end I've ever seen in my life. Um, right, but outside right. of her, I can't think of one. Uh, Andy <laughs> Reid confirmed. This is crazy that this is true. This, this is the exact same play that you scored with the walk-off touchdown last year against the Chargers. Just, is that true? It was, one, it was one, one different route, and it was a swing instead of a corner on the front side of the play. But, so um, are you yeah. calling Andy Reid a liar? Live on our show. No. Right. Just virtually, sure. it was. I I ran the same the exact route. It was. I it was you. a drag. It was just to run your ass across the field. For the most part, it was the, the same field. thing. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. It was just different coverages. So you saw how I caught yeah, the ball. Last the, year you caught it, reversed out. Boop boop. Zone like coverage. A, uh, so I knew yeah. I knew I had to split defenders. Mm -hmm. um, had to be and a then, Picasso, and then this one was just straight speed. <laughs> It's like that Speed Rocky Balboa. Kills. Speed. 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 <laughs> Man, this um, dude, uh, this dude, Jerwin James, got probably got the better of me. It was a tale of, you know, two tapes. You know, at the end, I finally got open on him uh, and got in the end zone. Like I said, it was man robber, so I'm not sure if he was expecting somebody to have, you know, that ha that other side of the field, somebody cutting him and helping him. Uh, yeah. But he had been uh, – he had been doing a damn good job of uh, guarding me the entire game. And I was just hoping that Coach Reed was dialing something to where I could just run away from this dude because once he got his hands on me, man, it was hard for me to get it off. Yeah, but, well, uh, they did their best to try and uh, get his hands off of you with that little rub concept right there. Yeah, um, yeah. How do you guys teach that? We used to teach that slapping hands. You'd slap hands right as you went by the guy to make sure you're tight oh, close enough. This high school hairy bullshit. <clears throat> that's like the in the silent cadence when the tight ends on the at the end of the line and he like he puts his hand on the calf of the tight end oh my that's on the oh fuck <laughs> what the fuck he's gonna tell me when to move bro if you're moving when that tackle's <laughs> calf moves you we're are late late we're you late. are late oh my goodness we're in bad we're in bad it's bad business yeah but that's uh yeah the old slap in the hands it looks sweet on film you know yeah. when yeah but it's a marketing um, tool was it was it like that was the teaching point? Like I want you guys so close you can t slap hands. Yeah, if you if you can slap hands, you're in the right like distance of the rub. What if what if the DB's coming from the sky and it's like you now you're slapping hands for no fucking reason? Travis, I don't play receivers. I think <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head. It was ecology. Uh, it worked though. I mean, but um, I think it's one of those things that sounds good. It's an easy coaching point. Yeah, you guys know. were high five and mid route. The set ready go thing. Oh my gosh, miserable. We teach it the middle. The the I can't even. I'm not even going to get into what we teach. We're not. We're not. We're not high fiving. Not, we're running a route. That guy actually has a route to where he he needs to get over. It, it looks like it's just. It, honestly, it didn't even look like like I've seen like true pick designs. One hundred. percent You know what I mean? Where you're 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 clearly trying to get in the guy's way. That one just looks like you guys are running it at those distances. It's designed where if it's man, maybe you'll get a little bit, but it's not like a. It's not even like, um, you know, those third down and one plays where the tight end or receiver is clearly just catch trying a guy to get at away. the line of yeah. scrimmage. Yeah, 
Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, this definitely was not that. It was a it was a dialed up shallow cross to run across the field, get away from my man defender, use my speed to my advantage. Classic and, man um, beater. Yeah. Marquez Valdez Scantling on Twitter has a tight end ever won MVP because I definitely <laughs> know a guy. No, I think he's talking about you. Um. I think he's definitely talking about me, and Marquez is my dog for that, and I appreciate that, but there ain't no chance. Yeah, no tight end has ever won. No tight end has ever come in the top five of MVP voting. It's uh, most the, valuable passer, right? Yeah, the closest thing we have is offensive MVP. Yeah. For a tight end. Who is that? That was Gronk, I'm assuming? Gronk, Gronk was runner-up in 2014. but um, 14? Yeah, yeah, I mean. That wasn't even his best like year, I don't think. Who knows? Maybe it's. I feel like a lot of those awards kind of come, you know, after you've built your name up a little bit. So maybe it wasn't his best year. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the stats. But yeah, it is the most valuable passer. I mean, no court, no non quarterback has won that award since 2012. Adrian Peterson was Dude, dominating up there AP. in uh, Minnesota. Dog. Yeah. Dog. That's for damn sure. There's a lot of people that think that it's unfair that the MVP award goes to quarterbacks all the time. I mean, what are you going to do? Ron Rivera said it best, man. Quarterback play. (laughs) I mean, listen, there's no other position on the field that affects the outcome more. Um, The reality is that quarterbacks tend to be the most valuable player on most teams. Um, You know, it's, it's, it's how the league works. It's how, it's how football works. I mean, so I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's unfair at all. I don't, I'm with as an offensive lineman. I know I'm important. (laughs) I know I'm not as important as a quarterback. That's just the reality of it. <laughs> that's just the reality of it. Uh, that's some good shit right there. Officially, the most 100-yard receiving games in tight end history. What's that mean? Tony Gonzalez said it best, man. This ain't your daddy's, uh, this ain't your daddy's league. At the times are changing, man. I have more opportunities to catch the football than any other tight end. I'm pretty sure that's stati- statistically proven, too, with, with the amount of targets that I get. Um, and the type of routes that I get are, you know, they're they're f- quarterback friendly routes. Um, it's almost, uh, you know, taking a complete Andy Reid scheme and and finding ways to inc- incorporate the tight end in that scheme. It's just I I got the cheat code. I got the ultimate cheat code to be able to get pat these stats and put up these hundred yard games. It doesn't make any sense why George Kittle doesn't have a hundred yard game every single game well, that's, with the that's type of my, offense that he has. I understand what you're saying, and I know you're a humble guy, but why doesn't every tight end do it then? If the, if the league has changed so much, why are you the one breaking the record and not every single tight end in the NFL right now? I don't think guys are getting the opportunities that I'm getting. But it's not your daddy's NFL anymore, so they Correct. should be getting those opportunities, right? If it's not your daddy's NFL, they are getting the opportunities. This is true. This is true. I think it's a way more pass-happy league. Um, of course. Yeah, no uh, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. I think the the overall league has changed to a pass friendly league to a kind of more of an offensive friendly league, um, and yeah, I'm definitely reaping the benefits of it. I think you're being a little bit humble, and uh, I get it. You're a good dude, but um, you know, not every tight end is having the the numbers that you're having. So, uh, been fortunate, man. Been are you a receiver man. or a tight end? Because I think if you would poll all of uh foxborough in the boston area um you would undoubtedly i'm a ballerina be i'm a ballerina to them yeah that's what i yeah. <laughs> i'm not even a football player <laughs> i'm just like some turd off the street that they gave a helmet <laughs> so this fuck he's not a, he's not even a football player okay he doesn't block the bet one of my favorite quotes man they 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 uh they hit me on twitter everybody was just hounding me on twitter man so i just started blocking like random <laughs> random guys on you Twitter. You block people? Oh, How do you yeah. block them? You could no, just you go no to their page. You could just block them if you get sick of like seeing them come up on your uh, mentions and stuff like that. I don't block and nobody. They, <laughs> they hit me with nobody the, gets under my skin. New England hit me with the uh, yeah. He doesn't block on the field. He's the best blocker on Twitter, though, man. <laughs> That's why. Look at that. You're giving him ammo. <laughs> it was yeah. It was pretty smooth. I, I deserve that one. It's pretty good. Um, so you didn't. I just play question. football, man. I just play football. Yeah. There are times where I get lined up at quarterback. There's times I get lined up at fullback. There's times I get lined up at wide receiver, inline tight end. Uh, there's situations where we go tackle over, and now I'm a tackle. There's situations, you know, 
all across the board where I just go out there and play ball. And I, I try and give my coaches and my teammates the best opportunity for us to have success, be accountable. Um, I feel like I, can, I got matchups that I could have success with all over the field. Um, yeah. And um, with that being said, you know, that's where I think I separate myself in the tight end room um, compared to others is being able to be that jack all trades, you know, that, uh, I, that utility guy, man. Dude, I, I can cannot, be your plumber. I can be your electrician. Whatever you want me to be, man. I got you. Yeah, I, I cannot. You need a landscaper. Stand. Got you. I don't care what they call you. I think it's stupid. I think this whole idea of like, you know, you have to do a tight end does this and this and that and this. A quarterback does this and this and that and this. How do you create mismatches? How do you create production? How do you uh, stress a defense? I will, I'll say this. One of the most honorable things is to have another coach on the other team come up to you and say, man, you're a heck of a player. Like That means you, they, they focused on game planning just specifically to stop you. And yeah. that's, that is the ultimate honor. If I, and, and that's what I've been very fortunate about is, or fortunate in the league is to be able to be a vocal point like that. You know, and to to have that pride, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. these guys, I, I make that much of a difference to where they're focusing on where's 87 every play. Exactly. Are you stressing the defense out? Are they having to change what they do to stop you? Yeah. Right? Are you creating mismatches? Are you creating advantages for the offense? This It's about scoring points. I don't care what you're calling people. Mm-hmm. We're trying to it's, – it's like basketball. It ain't a point guard shooting. I mean, it's a one, two, three, four, five. Whatever it is, we're finding a way – to put points up and run a successful offense. Yeah. Um, there was a, I remember somebody having like an argument with one guy and he was like, you know, I didn't, I don't like Mike Wallstock cause he wasn't a great blocker. I'm like, dude, I don't, is he scoring touchdowns? <laughs> what are we talking about right here? Like we're, we're you know, I, I just don't understand that philosophy. Um, I don't even know if that's true. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. He looked, he looked like he'd be a hell of a blocker. I'll tell yeah. you what. I know what, I know what, what is true is that he scored a lot of touchdowns. He made a big difference in the outcomes of games. 100%. So, you know, I think, um, I think you can get locked into like the traditional way something's done. And, uh, you know, I think in, in a lot of ways you've been a part of the tight end revolution. You know what I mean? It's not your daddy's NFL. That's because there's guys like you that exist that, uh, create these mismatches throughout it. And the game has changed, no doubt. There is a pass-happy league. Linebackers are different. Safeties are different. The rules of the game are different. So everything is evolving. And, uh, you know, you've kind of hit the the league at a perfect time, but also been an unbelievable player that's, uh, that's you know, uh, dominated an entire era of the game. So, I don't know. I think, um, you know, I don't I just, get locked just, into what the traditional metrics of a position are. In yeah. another era, I probably would have played fullback. Probably wouldn't even played center. So, um, I think – uh, I don't know what I would have played in a different era. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe quarterback? Probably, would, probably receiver. <laughs> Chiefs would lose in front of the Fonz. <laughs> the Fonzarella. Uh, Fonzarelli or Fonzarella? The, the Fonz, Fonz, man. It's the Fonz, man. The Fonz was in attendance. The Winkler. Do you have a Fonz shirt? I do. I do. I got. We got it made. We knew he that uh, the connection w- was uh, that he – I forget what the actual connection is. I think he said Pat Mahomes was his favorite player So he and, and that he was coming to the game. Yeah. So one of the equipment uh, – Equipment guys in Casey Kale ended up making me a shirt uh, with the Fonz. I think it was, it was family, football, and Fonz, man. It's did, all about uh, did, the Fonz, the coolest cat in the land. Did uh, Coach Klein give you guys any pointers for the game? Monday, Tuesday, happy day. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, happy day. Saturday, Sunday, happy day. Bring it all back to you. These days are right. I don't know the rest of the words. Oh, happy days. <laughs> man, what a tune, man. Nick at Night. That was man. a good one. Nick at Night. That was a great one. Um, did you meet him? I missed him, dude. You missed him? How do you miss the Fonz? Winkler, dude, I saw him come in as I was warming up. It was like, as soon as I get done warming up, I'm going right over to him. Went right over to where I saw him. Was not there. So I like stood on the field and just like scoured the field for a little bit. And he must have just jumped in and jumped out and i missed him i just that 
by the time it was like time to play football, I was just like, all right, I'm not thinking about the Fonz, but doggone, that would have been pretty sweet. I don't know. That was a great show. Happy Days is unbelievable. It was a good show, man. Not that Henry Winkler hasn't done other more successful or uh, highly successful uh, uh, roles since then, but one of our favorites, man. It's kind of crazy that like his his signature move, the 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 jukebox punch, like is not even going to register with like that. It wasn't just him like doing a bit. Like he actually slapping electronics used to work. <laughs> remember we used to have that. <laughs> The you remember TV. we used to have that TV upstairs that you would have to hit the, hit the top of, and then all of a sudden it would whack it back into. Yeah. I don't know what the science was that made that work, but it's probably um, just a get like a cord loose or something like that. And every yeah. time we hit it, we kind of got it back in into place. Who who knows? Who knows but the Fonz yeah. had the touch with that old jukebox. <laughs> uh, get the what, party what, going. What would it be in a current Happy Days? Current Happy Days, if they did a remake, what would be the Fonz? What would be the equivalent of the Fonz tap? The Ox. I don't, I don't the know. Aux. The aux. What's the, uh, you, you fiddle with like the little cord that plugs into the phone. <laughs> you got to hold it just job, right. Fonz. You got to hold it just right. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, he set it up. <laughs> you know it, man. Oh my That's gosh. Good shit. The equivalent to, to, to the slap would just be obviously the turn off, turn on. Turn off, turn on. Turn off, turn on. I don't know what's going on with this fucking thing. I'm just going to turn it off, turn it back on, see if it fucking works. Surprising how often the turn it off, turn it on works. What movie was that? It was a a Dwayne Johnson movie, man. Oh, what movie was that? It it was like the underlining story. Like, yeah, electronics, man. You just got to turn it off, turn it on, man. (laughs) That's in a movie. Phone doesn't work. I'm just going to turn this fucking thing off, man. I don't know what's going on. Needs a break. Reboot. What um oh yeah we gotta talk about your celebration, uh so my celebration. Well, you had that nice little uh, prime time LT. There's a little bit of a debate. Were you giving the shout out to LT? Were you giving the shout out to D? I do I do shit like that all the time. I do it in practice. Um, I do it just. I have fun playing the game doing shit like that. I don't think Dion ever thought in his head. But this was oh, a I'm very to specific. Do. I would, and this very... is me. This is me taking it an extra step because I don't know what is in Dion's head. But I think Dion was just a natural high stepper in the moment of the game. That's how. That's his showmanship. He's just. Yeah. I got, you know what I mean? He's just. He's styling. Yeah. That's just. I'm not thinking. Oh, I'm going to hit the Dion and then the LT. I'm just in the moment being a showman of, of the game. I guess I don't know. I, that's just how I play football. I guess. So you just naturally playing the Chargers, did an iconic Chargers players Legendary touchdown celebration. touchdown celebration. You just randomly did that. It wasn't a full, it wasn't a full sell. It was, it was just kind of like, ooh, I'm in here. It wasn't a full LT right. sell. I didn't I get up know, on the toes. I don't toes. know that I'm buying I didn't this. get up on the toes. I didn't go hand behind the, behind the head for the, for the finger flip or the, uh, the ball flip. I didn't all extend right. the arm all the way. It wasn't a full LT. Even See, LT would say it wasn't a full this, LT cell. This, it'll, it'll this be whole like that wasn't, that wasn't like celebration. This whole conversation is explaining why you're a much better dancer than I am because I didn't notice any of the details of any of this stuff. You just fl- you flicked the ball, so it, same celebration. I don't know, Jason. How'd you hit the gritty? I really did it. It's a good thing that the camera angle didn't pick up my lower half. I don't know what. It was not a. Sometimes, sometimes you just get you get the angle. right angle, baby. Get the right angle, baby. Get the right angle. Anybody can. Hey. Anybody can well, gritty. Dion gave you props. He said T. Kelsey is a grown man. I'm looking for dude with that mentality, work ethic, physical attributes, and passion for the game. What Coach guy, Prime. Man. Coach Prime. Ain't man. hard to find. He ain't hard to find, baby. I love that dude, man. I love that- it. I remember having action figures of like the uh, the Dallas Cowboys when they won it. And Dion was one of the action figures. I knew he was yeah. like he was one of my favorite players because he was a baseball and and football guy. That's one Not of the most that. legendary it was, it was, it was stories. The entire yeah. thing about him, dude, he was the showman. You prime I mean? time. It's prime time, yeah. baby. Yeah, it's prime, baby. And well, he, was that uh, the coolest shout out of your career? I mean, that's a pretty fucking cool shout out. Yeah. Uh, another one was probably um, LeBron giving me a shout out for the first time, being a Cleveland guy, yeah. Northeast Ohio guy. Um, Used to play for his AAU team. Uh, I did not. I used to play against his AAU team. I thought I used you to did play one for... year where you played for his. Uh... <clears throat> no, I was not fortunate enough. No, I had a bunch of friends that played on his team though. Um, Got it. Yeah, who's the who's the coolest shout out you've ever had? 
I don't know. I didn't have Twitter for like the last five years, so probably it would be hard to say. But, I mean, like, you've, you've, you've heard somebody give you love that you were like, man, that was pretty cool. Like, did, like, Coward give you love or, like, a guy that you, like, love or appreciate a lot that was, like, that does TV or something? I mean, I get shout out from like uh, people in the football world, and it's cool seeing like uh, you know people that like I grew up watching or playing. Like it was cool, uh, like Jeff Saturday and I had like a moment out there during the game where I was trying to talk to the official, and he was like, "Hey, hey, stay away from him!" And like I don't know, I think uh, I know that sounds weird. Cool. It's not uh, a shout out, I, but like I think um, I met you know Kevin Mawai after the game, and you know he was saying. Uh, you know, he appreciated my game, and and I mean that's really cool coming from a Hall of Fame, like one of the best centers of all time. And then, you know, so I've had a lot of moments like that. Or coaches, yeah. you know, Rex Ryan gave me credit on ESPN, where uh, you know talking about you know how I've you know been a different type of player at the center position, and it's kind of transcended the spot a little bit. So <laughs> man, the Kelsey boys just be transcending shit, dog. Yeah, so I think you know what I'm saying. And maybe transcended is the wrong word. I don't know if that was what are these? Uh, he said it. He said it. Yeah. Well, sometimes you build up in your head. I'm like, oh, my God. Rex just said I was transcendent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't take compliments well. I usually just avoid you people. big bear. When people start talking about me, I just do my best to change the subject to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm right there with you on that. Eagles 17, Colts 16. Man, these Colts, man, they find a way to keep it close, man. Jeff Saturday's football team, I'll tell you what, they they got ball players. That's for damn sure. Now they got more to play for with Jeff Saturday being their coach and everybody kind of counting them out in a, in a sense. Um, New Heights is officially in the win column against the Colts, man. Doug. Let's start with your, uh, your game-winning drive, man. Uh, four thirty left. Eagles uh, rip off an eleven play, seventy five yard drive that ends with a Jalen quarterback draw for the go ahead right. touchdown in Jalen fashion, baby, using those power legs. Uh, all Eagles touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Um, what was the difference? What was the, is was there a big fourth quarter change that you guys did, or did it was just finally got to, you got executed in the way you guys know? Well, I, I think if you look at the whole game. Uh, you know, we were killing ourselves. Not to, I mean, the Colts played a really good game. They're a great defense, but you know, I, I mean, early on, I had a bad snap that killed a drive that took all a touchdown. Uh, man, we had other we had, snap, man. We are we the had we're penalties. The, we're the fucking we're the the QB sneak podcast and the fucking center miss snap podcast, man. I it's know. fucking. How about we tighten it up up front, boys? All right, let's get the ball well, to the quarterback. Well, we've had. Most of the snaps haven't been bad. Most of them have been miscommunication at the line. But, uh, yeah, we do need to figure that out. Choo-choo! Um, you guys hear that? Is that the is that? that the excuse train? Is that the excuse train coming in the Eagles locker room right now? Fucking guy, man. So, moving on. Uh, yeah. Note, first 10 point. Well, actually, a uh, clock management on the final drive. Are you uh, you guys thinking about that on the on the final drive or what? No. What? What kind of fucking... Where do we just go? What is it? What just happened here? I might need a little second. All righty. Well, as you can see, I look a little bit different. Travis uh, hit me in the feels a little bit, so we decided to postpone the show. Uh, we started recording that Monday night, and now we're back Tuesday to record the rest of it because I need to calm down. If there's anybody that knows how to get under my skin, it's uh, Travis Kelsey. Uh, I think, um, you know, we joke around a lot in the show, and we're having a lot of fun doing this, but I don't want to you know, you can't over uh, overstate how serious we take, you know, playing the game of football and doing our jobs and yeah. our teams. And, um, you know, I had a bad snap this last game that almost cost us a win. Um, and uh, we've had other procedural issues throughout the year that have been frustrating. So I take all these things really seriously. And, um, you know, probably got a, um, 
a little bit too uh, amped up. I mean, I really do think it's great what we're doing, and I think that Trav hit me what I need to hear. Uh, be accountable. Make the corrections. Don't make excuses. Everybody needs to hear that. I needed to hear that. Um, and, uh, you know, don't take myself too seriously. At the end of the day, I'm out there playing a the game. Have fun. Uh, go out there and uh, do your job. That's what it comes down to. So, uh, anyways, we're back at you with a great show. Was, what? I was just going to – obviously, it was it – was, they – Obviously, people know it was all fun and games, but it takes a true leader yeah. to be able to take shit like that to heart and get it fixed and get it changed and acknowledge it and things like that. But obviously, um, that's what makes you you, and that's you yeah. embody the city of Philadelphia. And I don't need you to praise me now. I don't need you to praise me now. I don't need you to praise me now. And I just wanted to tell everybody, man. I fucking dude, I love you, man. Um. Anyways, <laughs> the show. Um, one of the things we're really striving for with the show is to be as authentic as possible. Yeah. So, you know, I thought it was important not to cut any of this out and not to make it look like we just kind of, that didn't happen. Um, I want our emotions to come out. I want people to really feel like what it's like to be an NFL player, to make mistakes, to, to have success, to win games, to lose games. That's one of the beautiful things that we're trying to uh, impart with this show. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's what it feels like when you're a center and you have a chance to go win a uh, score a touchdown and you snap the ball over the quarterback's head. You're fucking mad! So, um, anyways. That's, that's fair. Let's get on to the rest of the show. I feel you on that one. Let's talk about uh, how you guys did come through in that fourth quarter, though. And, yeah. Uh, Jalen Hurts. Um, can't say enough about him, man. He, he you guys, he leads you guys, helps you guys get a, a, yet another win. Um, I believe it was the first ten point fourth quarter comeback by Eagles in twelve years yep. since you've been there. I've never um, done it. Lost forty three straight when trailing by double digits in the fourth quarter, and yep. um, sometimes it just takes you know the right group to be able to find a way to win, man. Find a way to drag yourself across the finish line, baby. Well, you know, and quite frankly, the right quarterback. I mean, you know, I don't know how many things Jalen's going to have to do to to show people, you know, that he's, you know, right up there with the best in this league. But um, I really do think this has been waiting to happen with him. He's yeah. a very calm, composed player, confident, and he he's a dynamic player in those types of situations in those two-minute drives. Yeah. Um, as you know, when you go into those drives, you kind of – each side's playbook kind of shrinks down to like what are your core plays and you just get to go out there and play yeah and um you know he's such a dynamic player not just in the air but obviously in the ground and for a defense to try to defend that entire span while no huddle is happening while the situation is happening it's a lot man um it, there's a lot going on and yeah. um he didn't disappoint two huge drives in the uh end of the third, fourth, and quarters. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's got ice in his veins. Okay. Ice in the veins? It was uh, it was awesome. It really was. Ended it with a QB draw just to seal it off in Jalen fashion, man, using those power legs. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a great call by the coaches. Obviously, they knew uh, there was a tendency that they were going to be in that defense where they're going to be, you know, those backers look out to try and get those double teams or uh, support inside leverage on those receivers. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's wide open. The Great defensive play tackle, call. Defensive tackle uh, tried to make like a last-ditch play. I thought it was close to working for him. Tried to outside swim Isaac. Isaac stuck on him. And, uh, you know, once that happened, you know, there was kind of nothing in there in the middle. Yeah, it was enormous. The It was a walk-in for him. It was yeah. such a walk in that he actually walked straight into the Colts mascot. mascot. Dude. Which was entertaining because it became now that a was battle great. a battle of the The of Hump the battle. The Hump <laughs> battle. Dude, I have not I've never seen a hump battle before. And I'm upset that, that I ended it. Intense. I went up to him to hug him. I didn't know that him they were and the battling mascot were out. having a moment right there. <laughs> I would have let that keep going. <laughs> I mean, according to uh, Key and Peel, there's a three pump limit, three pump limit, but three pump. You know, hey, and we throw in the flag. And, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, maybe the mascot was ahead of the game. Maybe he was trying to bait Jalen into three him? pumps. Oh, because really, epic. I mean, there's a minute. 
there's over a minute left in the game. That's a big time flag. So if all of a sudden, thrown. if this guy can bait Jalen into a 15 yarder, that's great field position on that ensuing drive to try and tie it up or win it. Little did um, we know that mascots were that far ahead of the game, dude, man. I'm telling you, that guy's Old a weird. Blue. That guy came up to me after. I don't think I've ever talked to a mascot in my life. What? He had a voice? What? Well, okay, for our child listeners. That's like number one rule. Yeah, you yeah. cannot use you can't your break voice. Character. You can't break character. Cannot. What? It's what Disney, did he say? It's Disney <laughs> World 101. He just said he had a lot of respect for my game and really appreciated the player, <laughs> loved the podcast. And I was like, dude, I don't even know what's happening right now. I've never, <laughs> I've only talked to one mascot, and that's the Eagles mascot. <laughs> I only really talk. I only talk to Kevin. I don't talk to anybody else. Kevin, you know his name. That's awesome. Well, that's yeah. Anyways, um, God, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, that guy so, is a legend, man. He he loves. He said he game, knew huh? the Eagles mascot too. Like I guess there's like a a mascot uh, underground no, for uh, sure. committee that there's apparently a, a community. They all know yeah, each other. They meet all the time and discuss how to try and coax 15 yard <laughs> penalties out of other opposing players. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's pretty freaking good right there. Shout out to Blue, man, for being a, sh- a fan of the show, man. That was so awesome. Blue getting a shout out. New Eagles make their debut. Um, yeah. Sunday was the debut of uh, Indomitus Sue. Live all Joseph. Indomitus Sue and Live all Joseph as Eagles. Um, <laughs> when the, Didn't how disappoint. How did you guys get fucking both those dudes off the street, man? What did Creed tell you? What did Creed say? Huh? Creed Humphrey, you said he said, what are you guys doing over there? You're building the Avengers? <laughs> Legendary, Should we man. not lie? Oh, we can take that out if we're not comfortable with that. But no, dude, it's, um, it's silly, dude. What you guys yeah. already had behemoths up front. Like what? Listen, I think um, you know we were already a very talented team, and these two guys are going to help us out. Um, they add not only talent but size and just experience. Experience, yeah. You could see it. Uh, I mean, even in the middle of the game, third quarter, offense clearly we were struggling. Um, not really to move the ball. It's the same thing as the week before. You know, we're making mistakes. Obviously, we talked about my snap. We there's the, uh, you know, turnovers, penalties, all these things that we're just killing ourselves over That's the and worst. over. You know it. Those and uh, and my man Sue is just like, hey man, we gonna get it. We gonna stop them. You guys get the ball back. You know what I mean? That's that's why it's nice to have some of those veteran guys around. And um, mm-hmm. not only did they play a great game, but I think they're gonna offer a lot from their personalities. Linval Joseph after the game had like the quote of a lifetime where he's like, hey, at the end of the day, we were gonna we had to drop our nuts. And that's a Philly fucking quote if I've ever heard one right there. Yeah, he's just a, he, yeah everybody loved him for that and one, for sure. It's been, it's been great, too. Just I've played against these guys so much. And Dominican Sioux in Detroit and Miami and, and, and L.A. and Tampa Bay. Limval in the New York Giants, Minnesota, and the L.A. Chargers. Um, I know they're good. <laughs> they, yeah, no, they, they make my my job that really ain't hard. No secret. That ain't so, no secret. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm more than happy that we were able to add both these guys, and uh, that our team is going to be that much more stacked uh, with the uh, end of the season coming up. I mean, without a doubt, man. That is a that's a whole lot of firepower you guys just added towards the end of the season, especially with those guys being fresh and being that that's that what, knowledgeable. So, dude, there oh were reporters gosh. asking me. They were they were like. Man, how crazy is it? These guys came in and just bought. I'm like, they're fresh legs. What'd you expect them to do? Like, you think these guys are gonna get that much better from like one week or two weeks of practice? Like, no, fresh legs. Every Limbaugh time. knows how to use his hands. And Dominican Sue, he knows how to use his hands. He needs, you know, you keep these guys fresh. fresh. Legs, man. Oh. That's how, yeah. I'm with you on that, man. Keeping guys fresh. How, how fresh are you feeling right now? I'm terrible. But anyway, so let's move on. <laughs> I'm right I, there with you. I brother. haven't I haven't felt fresh Let's since do it, uh, man. since 2017. All right, where are you? Uh... That's a lot of ball, baby. Coach Sirianni was uh, a bit emotional in the uh, post game. Yeah. You think it's more emotional that uh, to get the win against teams and like that you played for uh, against players that you've played played with, um, you know, or it, coaches that you're familiar with? You know what I mean? I think it's tough for us to kind of truly understand this because we've only played with one franchise our whole careers. Yeah. Um, you know, 
Nick is obviously, I mean, as a coach, you, you kind of bounce all over the place you, with multiple organizations. Yeah. yeah, 100%. But in Indy, his last stop was obviously with, you know, Frank Reich and a whole lot of people that he's got a lot of respect for, and he's got a personal tie. So I'd imagine it means a little bit more. I know it would to me if all of a sudden I left and was playing Philadelphia. I'm sure Rodney McLeod, a guy that was in Philadelphia for a long time, that's in Indy now that we played this last week, I know that game probably meant more to him. Um yeah. And it's not like you do anything different. It's just the emotions are going to be a little bit higher. So, you know, I didn't know it was that much. He did a good job of making it feel, you know, keeping the game, the focus, not himself, which I think is good. Yeah. Uh, but, man, you saw it after the game. You saw it after the game in his press conference. Yeah. I think Jalen probably had a sense because he gave him the game ball. Um, you know, really happy that we were able to win that game. Uh one for ourselves, obviously, because we need to keep winning games. But, uh, you know, I'm happy that we pulled it out for Nick. It's a t- sign of a true great team, man, playing for more than just, you know, the wins and losses, man. That's everything, man. Jalen, as you say, gave him the game ball. And uh, a lot of it just seemed to, that he just, you know, has so much respect for Frank Wright. And obviously we both have a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Wright and Jeff Saturday. So shout out to Sirianni, man. He's now, invested, baby. You got to yeah. love that. So yeah, he's invested on, and, and, and to Frank, I know that he's got a lot of respect for Frank. You know, wherever he ends up, it's going to be fine. I mean, that yeah. dude's a great coach. It always works out. The, the, the cream always rises. That's, right. the, that's the matter, baby. I like that one. Moving on to New Heights Stamp of the Week. For all our new listeners, uh, we give a stamp. Each one of us give one stamp of the week to somebody that's taking their talents to the next level. Uh, taking it up a notch, reaching new heights in their career or their field or wherever they're at. Um, And uh, we usually like to keep it around football, but it can go anywhere. And um, I'll start it off, man. My my new height stamp of the week is the one and only Coach Prime. It's Prime, baby. Deion Deion? Sanders. What? The one and only, baby. One of my favorite athletes of all time. not even going to put him in the just football world because he's an all-around athlete. Uh, obviously playing in the MLB, um, and took coach. Jackson, yeah, head coach. First, uh, first time Jackson State has gone undefeated in a regular season, and um, you know it's only his second full season there. Obviously, the COVID year was uh, the first of it, and um, both of his sons are the the I would say probably the two best players on that team and uh, leading that team just as much as he is. I can't say enough about Prime man. A guy that's been a leader of men, uh, has been an unbelievable talent, has done it the right way, has done it his way. And himself. Not he's been himself. It's the best, man. Throughout it's the anything, best. man. I he's, love he's it. He's unapologetically man. himself. And, dude, he's changing the landscaping of, of, of it's college awesome, coaching. man. Absolutely he, awesome. His, his Going to an HBCU. His, and, his, yeah. uh, his swag that he's taking to the head coaching spot, he's taking what he did. Dude, it's crazy. He's taking it's, what it was as an NFL player and mm-hmm. what it meant to be like a styled, like, uh, like he made the cornerback position the like the I like Revis yeah. Island isn't the yeah. same without Deion Sanders. But but I'm just saying You're, like the, all these. He changed what it meant to almost be an NFL athlete on like a showmanship level, right? He was yeah. like Muhammad Ali for the NFL. He took it <laughs> to another level like of comparison. like, this is what you can be like as a personality. And he's doing the same thing to coaching. Yeah. Like how many coaches do you see do that? None. And uh, dude, it's awesome. I love it's it. It's awesome to see it's, it. It's exciting. And uh, man, great pick. Shout out, shout out great to Coach pick. Prime, baby. Taking his game to new heights, even though he's already the best that's ever done it. So. Who you well, got for coaching? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got Marcus Jones. I got Ooh. Marcus Jones for the New England Patriots taking a game-winning a, two DBs. punt return to the house. To it's the, house. the first punt return this year taken to the house. How crazy is that? Really? Think, yeah. Usually, That's nuts, isn't I don't it? No. I mean, yeah. It's, it just is, shows how much wild. special teams has changed. Like you used to see kickoff returns, punt returns. It used to be a dynamic part of the game. And the rule changes and things to make the game safer, and to, it's just kind of taken away from that aspect of it. So it makes the those plays even more impactful when they happen. Yeah. And I mean, this is a game that was not there wasn't anything going on on either offensive side of the ball, right? No. Both defenses were playing stifling defense. Uh, this ended up being the big play of the game. It won them the game. 
the one for on a the, rookie yeah. DB game winning punt return touchdown. And the th- the reason it's it sticks out a little bit more is that all the Jets fans wanted it called back. They wanted that block <laughs> that weak block in the back call that did not impact the play. They were hoping the refs would just please refs give us the game back. Come on now. That's a touchdown. <laughs> you want the refs to just hand you back that game? I mean, I got nothing I got no horse in this fight. I like the Jets and the and the uh and the, the Patriots. Pets. I you know, I don't have any qualms either way. But come on, let's not let's not hope and pray that the refs give us the game back. This is what I'm talking about with the officials. It's getting out of control. All right, it's getting out of control. <laughs> it is. It is getting out of control. That's a hell of a pick though. Two DBs getting the height stamp of the week. Hey, congrats hey. to Marcus Jones, man. Way to go, Marcus. All righty. Thanksgiving week. Usually <laughs> we'll magical. do a little bit of stuff around the league, try and touch out all these storylines. But let's do it a little bit different this week. Let's talk about Thanksgiving, huh? We, you know we love us some holidays. thought we we'd take some, some time holidays. out of this episode for Travis and I uh, to say one thing that we've truly been thankful for in our football careers. Hmm. This is tough. You want to go first? You want me? Is to go it first? tough? Are you kidding me? I'm thankful for Andy Reid. Right. I'm thankful for Patrick Mahomes. Um, oh, I said one thing. Yeah, they're they're a tandem. They're right. the same thing. Honestly, um, Siamese twins. I can honestly say that I am extremely thankful for Andy Reid, and I can just leave it there, man. What he has been able to do for my career, and what he's been able to do um, through this offensive scheme, I've developed into a more receiving style tight end. Everyone knows that. It's no secret, but um, he's done it in a way that still maximizes my strengths, and it doesn't take away from the overall goal of the offense. We still want to have a great running game, and to have a great running game, you got to have tight ends that block. And um, him, Coach Heck, uh, the offensive coaching staff, put me in a great position to have success. And uh, if there's anything or anybody that I can be extremely thankful for, it's uh, it's extremely thankful for the guy that's been leading me my entire career, that put me in this position, that gave me this opportunity, and also um, put me in the best position for me to have success uh, and all the success and all the fun that I have out there on the field. So I'm thankful for Big Red, baby. Yeah, um, I disagree. I think this is a really tough one, at least for me. Um, there's so many people. Uh, not you know, dad, uh, you know, Jeff Stalin, who, if I talk about, I will literally tear up and cry like David Carr. Um, you know, I got um, Howard Mudd, who was you know, part of the R. reason that I was drafted to Philadelphia, Andy Reid. All these guys are great mentions, but I got to go one guy, and um, it's the guy that had the foresight to even think I could ever become an offensive lineman. I'm going Paul. Oh, <laughs> meat leaves and berries, I baby. Him. Yeah, I mean, ah. I for you know for our listeners, you know, I was a walk-on linebacker uh, at Cincinnati, two hundred and thirty pounds, just trying to make it and earn a scholarship. And um, my first year in college football, our head coach Mark D'Antonio took a job with uh, Michigan State after the season. And Brian Kelly and his coaching staff came in to Cincinnati. And with them came a weightlifting coach, a, a weight room coach named Paul Longo, who had a kind of was known for taking athletic guys and moving them oh, into yeah. offensive linemen and defensive linemen positions. He had done it at Iowa. He had done it at Central Michigan. He had done it with Joe Staley. Joe Staley, yeah. He just had an eye for it. And he had a he had a program for it. And – um I'll never forget I'm doing off-season conditioning and Paul, you know how he is, is just kind of looking over at me and I'm like a nobody really on the team. And um, it was right after about midway through off-season conditioning program and he said, you know, you'd make a great center. And I looked at him, I was like, you're you're nuts, old man. What are you talking about? (laughs) I've never played offensive line did, in my life. He did have a little bit of the crazy to him. He, he did, did have that little, and I all, love that all, about him. Every genius I mean? does. All genius is always right on that borderline right there. Yeah, you know, and, I love um, playing that border. You know, I didn't know if he was being serious or what was happening. Um, all I knew is I did my best job to be in shape for that spring training, spring uh, spring ball. And um, one week afterwards, they moved me from linebacker to offensive line. 
And uh, that was it. I haven't looked back since. And uh, I don't know if that would have ever happened without you, Paul. I don't know if other strength coaches or coaches would have had the foresight to see that happen um, or had the skill set necessary to build the muscle and weight the right way to be allow me to keep my athleticism. So, yeah, man, the person that I'm thankful to is uh, Paul Longo. Thanks a lot, brother. Wouldn't be here without you. Shout out to Longo, baby. And talking about who we're thankful for uh, has me thinking about Thanksgiving from growing up. Do you remember, like, what, what was Thanksgiving like growing up? I already know where you're going with this. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere with this. We have a really small family, so it was It was only, most Thanksgivings, it was just me, Trav. You know, we talked about the you know, grandparents three. came in. And we alluded to this earlier, but uh, one of the best things about Thanksgiving, besides the food and, uh, you know, being together at the table, was getting to hear my dad scream at my brother to finish his food. Because Trav is a picky eater. We've touched on this before. Doesn't like white sauces. Doesn't like uh, goat. Um, well, it turns out he doesn't like Thanksgiving food either. Um, uh, it was it was the stuffing and the mashed potatoes. That was always it. And I had to put everything on my plate. And Those are the only two things all. you ate? Didn't eat. You don't? So you ate? What else I was did there? Not, corn? There was corn, mac and cheese, the rolls. The ham, which is my yeah. favorite part. I ate all the ham. Um, we were a big ham family growing up because we, uh, we we didn't think turkey was very good. Turns out if you cook turkey really well. The right way. Yeah. It, it tastes fantastic. It's phenomenal. <laughs> we had that dry turkey. Dad, 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 knew, dad knew about that uh, that honey-baked ham though, over there yeah. at the uh, Boston Market. And, For sure. Uh, and <laughs> that one always slaps. Yes. <laughs> but he... Uh, he knows that um, if there's one thing we need to be thankful for, it's the opportunity to have food on our on our table. Mm-hmm. And um, if there's I, one um, way to piss Ed Kelsey off, it is not finishing the food on your plate. <laughs> um, man, that's the <laughs> one. Is that bad? That the one thing I have imprinted in my head uh, more than anything else. No, that's that's are you? Th- it's you? Are you kidding me? I'm in bawling in tears my I entire was, childhood. I was because I didn't every want second it. of it. I was like, "Hey, Dad, <laughs> these mashed potatoes sure are good. <laughs> <laughs> these hungry man, mash, hungry Jack mashed potatoes. These fake potatoes with, he just whipped up with five five sticks of butter." <laughs> There are starving children, and if you better eat that food and be thankful. I don't want to eat it. I don't Can like I just it. get up from the table? You're not getting up go. until you finish your food. I just want to go, Mom. I said thank you. Ed, let him go. Let him up. No, he's gonna finish his food and be thankful. Do you I'll tell think, you what. It you did, it, this- what it did was it, it gave me a different perspective. That even if you know, no matter what that food tastes like to me. You know, you guys loved it. You guys, all of it. The obviously the Thanksgiving dinner was was beautiful, and it was it was everything it needed to be up until that point. Do you I'm think that I played, man? Do you think I Dad's am. stance like made you more of a picky eater? Like, I think on one no. side, like you kind of had no. to eat the food, otherwise he wouldn't let you leave the table. Right. But on the other side, like now you just don't like. I try and get you to try stuff, and you're like, no, Stop, don't even try dude. it. You've gotten me to try a few things. Travis, okay. I tried to get you to try that goat, the lady and the goat. It was like in your mouth and out your mouth faster than like, I don't know. I don't even, goat, I can't even have a comparison. Goats just look too much like dog. It was like, like this. Dog. Yeah. Goats look too much like dog, and I just feel like I'm eating a dog whenever I'm. All right. I got nothing for that. Dude, that is, uh, that's pretty good, man. Shout out to Kelsey for, you know, forcing me to understand it, man. I'm thankful now, man. I'm thankful now. I was thankful then. I just, <laughs> just you were always eater. thankful. You just didn't want to eat the food. And Dad grew up in a different time where food was not as abundant as it is right now. Or I mean, he just wanted you to be thankful for the food. He did. I don't know he if did. it was right or wrong. Was, I'll probably yeah. do the same thing to my girls and imprint whatever uh, insecurities you gain from that situation <laughs> into their minds. <laughs> I'll eat mashed potatoes now. Now to the most important Thanksgiving segment. Uh, the New Heights Backyard Turkey Bowl. Yeah, baby. And this is the draft. 
So we got a draft. Time. You got a draft. You can't this. have a turkey bowl without a draft. You know what I mean? This is where you line everybody up in the yard and you get pick two captains and you're like, yeah, that guy. I yep. want that guy on my team. Mm-hmm. Don't want to be last. <laughs> you definitely don't want to is be last. Is there anything more demoralizing than being the last pick on anything? Jason, I'm the same athlete that you are. I do not know what it feels like to be picked last. I think I've been picked last. To what? It, it's been a very long time. Very long time, but... I think it's happened. I uh, I think everybody knew who you were and it was just like, all right, he's got to be half the guy that guy is. So <laughs> we're going to pick him. Um, and I was always one of the bigger kids. So it was like, yeah, size always helps. Here's how it works. Five rounds to draft our team of five uh, to be on our backyard football squad. We need a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, and a tight end. And can't forget a coach. Yep. Um, that would be the fifth one, and uh, we can pick from the following categories of people. The first well, round they have to be. They have they to have be the to following. Be. Yeah, rules are rules, Jason. Can't bend yep. the rules. This is a little uh, bit different. I, when I first read what we were doing here and uh, found this out, I, I assembled my team completely. In, I had a, a banger <laughs> of a team. Let me tell you. But yeah, these are the new rules. All right. Are these round the one. Rules? Round one has to. I be I hope a you guys all play out. too. Nice, yeah. You guys join join in and let us know uh, who your starting five are. Um, round one has to be a former teammate. Round two is a player on a rival NFL team. Uh, round three is a media member or a fellow podcast host. Round four, uh, an athlete from another sport. And then round five, a family member. Don't forget the family member. There we go. All righty. Who's and your first pick? I was about to say, are, do we, are we flipping a coin or are you just giving me, you giving me the honor? It says it, it has Travis picks, Jason picks. Sounds like so, I get the first pick. This might screw me up if you pick one of my picks. Hopefully that well, doesn't happen. Former teammate. As a quarterback, I'm going with one of the best backyard football, just all around football guys I know. I know who you're going with already. Zach. Zach. Hilarious. Hilarious. I knew it. I knew it already. Because if there's anybody you want in any kind of game in this style, it's Zach Hilarious. He's a great uh, For those that don't uh, aren't familiar with Zach, he is the MOP, the most outstanding player in the uh, Canadian Football League uh, for the past two years. Has led his team to the Grey Cup numerous times. Un- unfortunately, fell up short this year. but is, Runner-up is this definitely... year. They won it last year. Um, but still the best player in the league, uh, hands down. And uh, one of our good friends are... I call him my brother at this point. Yeah. Um, we lived with him in uh, KC, and uh, when I tell you this guy is an all-around football KC, guy. KC, would... UC. UC, my bad. I get those <laughs> 127 West Nixon. Shout out to the shout out to the Bearcats. Um, yeah. But Zach was a guy that not only played quarterback and was a stud yeah. at quarterback at the University of Cincinnati, ran down on kickoff, was a dual yeah. safety quarterback in high school. Um, Won a state championship at Steubenville, this... Ohio. Ew! Big Red, the Big Red, the Big Red. About the only thing that's in that town, but they love their Big Red. Oh, God. I love an that electric town. place. Student was awesome. And then, um, yeah. So he's uh, he's one of those guys. He can just do it all, man. He can just do it all. So I know I'm getting an offensive, defensive star. Yeah, I mean that's a great pick, and I like that you thought of somebody that was also going to have to play offense and defense. I mm-hmm. thought you might make that mistake, but great pick by Zach. And Zach was one of the people I had in mind. But come on, we're playing pickup football. Oh shit! I already know who am I picking. Mike Michael Vick. Vick. <laughs> come on, I dog. Love how we knew exactly. Come who on, dog. We both know who we're picking. Mike Vick. Are you kidding me? The <laughs> human highlight pick. reel in a That's backyard a turkey bowl game. That's a damn good pick. Yeah, I, Zach. We're good gonna luck. Need a big time on defense. <laughs> Oh, by the way, just to clarify, the rule stipulated before this, all of these guys are in their prime. Yes, so any yeah. age player is is back to baseline yeah. level. You all right. Video game, arcade style. All right. Round yeah. two. <laughs> Moving on player, to round two. Uh, player on a rival NFL team. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm going to go with the guy that just locked me up for 90% of the game that I just played in, in Derwin James. An what? Absolute- what position is he playing? 
Oh yeah, he has to be. What position? No, I mean, listen, he can play both ways. I, I, I factored that in as well. I'm, but what, I mean, guys what are you locking him hands. in as? I'm throwing him in at wide out. That's your wide receiver. That's my wide receiver right Zach now. Zach Kolaris is throwing big, do you just, to Derwin do you just, James. Well, I mean, I got two other guys. Okay. This this just became really hard. I didn't read the rules like I should have. Um, but, I mean, taking Derwin James is not a bad pick. An absolute yeah. stud. A football he's guy. He's a good athlete. Just a I'll football tell you guy. You could throw him anywhere on the field. He's going to have success. Uh, he's not, not just I a football guy. He's also that. a professional wrestler, apparently, as we found out <laughs> uh, earlier this season. Uh, okay. That's a great pick. Solid pick. Uh, Who are you going with? Player on Saquon Barkley. NFL team. Saquon Barkley. Ooh, at running back. I, I needed to fill the running back position. Now that I know that you might not be filling the running back position, I kind of am a little, maybe I should have gone someplace else. But you know what? Saquon's an unbelievable athlete. And, yeah, uh, another football guy. You can put him yeah. anywhere, man. Just, yeah. just a savvy Listen, guy. Zach's going to have to wear, and, you know, well, I guess you got Derwin. <laughs> Derwin can hit. Zach's going to need to wear a cowboy collar for this one. <laughs> I can see him rocking it too, man. <laughs> Let's go zip. Break it out, baby. Oh, I love oh, that gosh. guy, man. Um, round three. Media member or fellow podcast host? Ah, I mean, this one is just way too easy for me. Um, we got the greatest tight end in the, in the National Football League's ever seen in Tony Gonzalez. Whoa! Playing tight end a national media member for Tony Fox Gonzalez and, uh, and Amazon. Just absolutely it's a great and, choice. And on top of that, on top of that, can't forget one of the greatest players ever in NFL street. Okay. Just an yeah. unstoppable God, force what a great game. in NFL street, man. Style That's really points. when I started thinking of who I'm drafting, I immediately started thinking of NFL street and who was good in that game. It's a similar and, style uh, game. Yeah. Tony G was a go-to man. This would definitely be an arcade, you know, style game for sure. All right. Who are you going with? I'm going uh, – I don't really know how to hype it up. I'm going Randy Moss. Randy Moss? That's pretty damn I mean, good. come on. Who else am I going to go with, bro? Can't, you got Michael I, I, Vick yeah, yeah, throwing to Randy Moss? No. Nah, that's pretty damn good. Derwin better good. strap it up. Derwin better bring his cleats, his, his fast cleats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And put some springs in them. Listen. Randy Moss in his prime. DJ, we need, to, we need to get your hands on that man. He, I mean, he. Cr- this is how you know you're a beast when, like, an entire move becomes your name. Yeah, yeah. You got. Moss. I mean, that's it. You got. Moss. Like, I, I hope one day they call a pulling center. Like, hey, man, did you see that guy Kelsey over there? But <laughs> like, until they start doing that, I ain't nowhere close to a, somebody saying, "Hey, he just mossed that dude right there." Mm-hmm. It's That's your next level if you're hey. if they're using your name to describe an entire move. Absolutely, and everybody down. just instantly knows what you're talking about. Yep, straight cash, homie. That's a hell of a fucking pick. Um, and uh, to complete my team, I got to find a running back, um, an athlete from another sport, and I'm gonna go ahead and cheat, and hopefully I'm not breaking the rules. But Bo Jackson did play baseball, so I'm gonna go Bo Jackson. Whoa! <laughs> he did get a running back. Gosh, that's a good pick. That is a great pick. Just pre, an all-around athlete. Pre-hip being torn out. I'm not so sure that there's anybody better than Bo was unbelievable. <laughs> great 30 for 30. or Was that a 30 for 30? Was that a, uh, I think it was a 30 for yeah. 30, yeah. Unbelievable documentary. Um, Bo knows. Bo Gosh. knows, baby. Good picks. Oh, man. Oh, All right. Athlete from another sport. Who to round out with? my team. To play tight, tight end. end, I'm taking Shaquille <laughs> O'Neal, baby. <laughs> well played. Bro, Very well played. I don't know if he can play football at all. <laughs> Big man, just running the end zone. Mike's going to throw it to you. Ain't going to be too hard. It's the gonna be, this man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, good luck covering that one. The diesel band. Damn, that's a good one, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, these this is a pretty good it's pretty good start. This was fun right here. Family Very member. Fun. Oh, we're not done. Round five. Family, Family member. Family member as a coach. And I think we both picked them as our coach. <laughs> <laughs> of course we're not playing a game with that. <laughs> Give me Ed Kelsey, baby. Let's go, Ed. 
Lead you know, us to the promised land, Ed. Give us that wisdom, baby. You know, I thought about Ed Kelsey because Ed Kelsey made a great T-ball coach. He's the best. But man. He- you know what? On a Thanksgiving game, it's all about the love. So I went with Mama Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, baby. Donna Kelsey's our coach. <laughs> and we're eating those beautiful uh, cinnamon sugar marshmallow rolls uh, all game long. So lucky. Gosh. Good luck stopping that attack. Oh, man. The moment they come off to the sideline, they're going to be welcome. Steal some some of them rolls, man. (laughs) No, she's our coach. We're not sharing rolls. We're not sharing rolls. Come on, Mom. You know I'm your favorite, please. (laughs) That's a hell of a starting five right there. That was fun, man. That was fun. I I thoroughly enjoyed that. We're going to post our teams uh, on all the social media platforms. Uh, So go vote and tell us who is winning the New Heights Turkey Bowl. Please. Can't wait. Can't wait to see who you guys. It'll be fun uh, to see the results. I hope other guys, I I hope other athletes or I mean, I hope anybody just participates in this. Yes. Chime in. I would love to build your team. I'd love it. All right. Let's look ahead to week 12. Week 12, baby. Packers at the Eagles. Pack, Pack at the link, baby. Sunday night football. I'll tell you what. A Rod, A Rod coming in the house. Doesn't get any better than shaking up the world on a Sunday night. Ah, God, A Rod, AR twelve has said Philly has the best trash talking fans. He's on record, man, and that is uh, I can I can second that. They uh, they do a great job over there in Philly. (laughs) I I mean, you know they're the best when you're when you play for Philly and you get the trash talking done to you. Like if you're getting it as a current player. You know the opposing team's getting it ten times worse. <laughs> There's so much. They ain't holding back in that. Philly. There's so much truth in that. <laughs> oh, man, uh, what should we expect? And uh, maybe, uh, maybe his last game at the link. Who knows, man? Who I'm knows? not going to say that. Come on now. Me neither. I had to. Ask yeah. You, I only know how to read the prompter, like Ron. Brown, I know. Man. I know that that's the big question that everybody wants, but. Who knows? I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. I, you yeah. know, he's – that guy is an unbelievable player, uh, ha, and, you know, he's going to play for however long he wants to. Yeah, um, as long as and, that guy wants to play, somebody's definitely putting him back there 1,000%. So um, – How do you – yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's his last season, but that's up to him. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia comes out with arguably the edit of the year. You know, sexy Batman. You know, a, Dude. what was it? A generous bulge. Generous bulge. Philly, Philadelphia, Eagles. Social media uh, announces that you guys are wearing all black, baby, and that includes yeah. the black helmet. I think the black helmet's the one that's kind of new. new, right? That's yeah, because well. So this is what the first year I think in a long time they've allowed uh, alternate helmets yeah. to be, yep. which is a big reason why we haven't ever done the Kelly green because our normal helmet is the uh, midnight green. Yeah. So, um, yeah, went with the black helmet. We're going to wear all black, uh, blacked out for the game. Uh, and let's I not hate... forget how fierce <sighs> you look in that picture next to you. I mean, you embodied the all black <laughs> Like no one. Listen, else. there's a reason I don't do photo shoots. I, I, I'm not a big fan of photo shoots. Are you kidding me? Um, You're part of the photo shoot that like embodies all athletes. You are on the ESPN body issue. Yeah. Anyways, there's a reason I don't do photo <laughs> shoots. Never been a fan of photo shoots. The Eagles released these jerseys today, and I gotta say, um, I don't know if if those were the most flattering pictures of me. Uh, I'm never doing a photo shoot again. I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> there was, was like zero intimidation. I, uh, yeah. Not oh, my strong man. suit. Let's go, baby. Not my strong hey, suit. Hey, listen, man. I got torched. K- KC, Kansas, the Chiefs media absolutely torched me when I shaved my beard, man. They put up that, that picture. I saw that. Yeah. Just, 
yeah. me looking like I'm a hundred years older than what I was because I was Travis shit tired and Travis. That was a random person taking a picture of you when you were unprepared. These are posed. The Chiefs photographs. posted it. These are posed photographs by professionals that are doing their best to make me look yeah. good. And those were the photos. They still they didn't chose. have to post it. They didn't have to post the, it. Dude, it's terrible. They could have. They could have picked. Who somebody looked else. at that post and was like, "These look. These look badass." Jason's fierce right here. Do yourself a favor and check out one of the least intimidating <laughs> re- reveals in history. They wanted me to share it. I'm like, I'm not sharing this. <laughs> hey man, fire up, man. We're wearing all black in the link. Let's go, birds. Let's go. Get fired up. Don't let this be. Don't let this, you know, turn our, down the excitement, okay? Our social team does a tremendous job. They do a great job. They're hard workers. That post was, was what do you call it? That post was buns. All right. <laughs> what do we got here? All right. Move it on, baby. Rams at Chiefs. All right, let's move on to the Rams at Chiefs. Last time these two teams met, week 11, 2018, in yes, Mexico sir. City. This is, um, no, 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 no. This was moved from Mexico oh, City. Oh, yeah, because I thought you guys Los played Angeles. the Chargers in Mexico City. Yes, we did, the following year. All right, the following so year. that makes sense. I read that incorrectly. Sorry. Yep. Um, third highest scoring game in NFL history. Yeah, yep. I think I, I read the, that correctly, though. Yeah, I was on the record-breaking, the bun side of a uh, record. I got a whole oh, bunch. Oh, it was I got a reverse. Few, I, I got a few buns records. We were the highest scoring team that's ever lost. How many points you guys score? 51. I you guys scored 51 points and you lost? <laughs> yeah. It's, it was wild, man. Wow. Was wild. What Pat was the score? 53-51 or something like that? 54-51? Dude. That was, it was a wild game, man. It was so I've seen fun. college was basketball games less than that. You're right. You're right. So those old school Cincinnati Big East games used to be like oh, yeah. 20 to 25. Mick Cronin was all about defense. All defense. Yeah, 54-51 uh, uh, Rams final. That's um, crazy. You guys yeah, lost. It was, and scored I think it was points. McVeigh. One of McVeigh's. You put up a fifty burger years. and lost. Yeah, that's nuts. Well, could have put up more too. It was wild. I had a few right. turnovers. Um, I had a few drops. Me personally, I had a few drops. I remember that game. That so, that game was so epic, man. It was. There's something about playing in the Coliseum. I I, I after I think it was yeah. that year because that was the yeah. year you guys won it. No, this is the no, year 17. after 2018. We won it. Fol- Nick was uh, Nick was the – Folsey was the uh, quarterback. You guys were playing in the Coliseum, and it was something about when that stadium gets dark, it, the fog comes in and makes it just mm. that much more dramatic. Like it kind of just becomes like a, a movie in a sense. Like a, like it's like – I don't know. Yeah, I felt it. I I thought it was awesome. The how big that stadium is when it's packed to the T and everybody's in that thing. That it is. It is an experience to be had, man. And I uh, I loved every bit of playing in that thing until we lost because it was a, it was a high scoring game. That was a really cool stadium. That was a cool uh, few years when the Rams were playing there. Um, iconic stadium, old. You felt it. It felt like a felt like you're saying. History. It just felt like a magical uh, kind of uh, stadium. Kind of like yeah. Green Bay does and uh, some of these uh, 100%. older stadiums that you just couldn't replicate even if you tried to rebuild them because yeah. there's like, you know, too much history, you know, blood, sweat, tears, puke, all that stuff backed into the rafters that is uh, embedded there for generations. Not only um, is just football, but all sports. I mean, it was a, yeah. it, initially an Olympic stadium, right? Yeah. I believe so. I think it was. The yeah. L.A. Olympics yeah. were there. Yeah, so we got the Rams coming into the house. The defending champs, I should say. The defending yeah. champion, St. Louis – or St. Louis, Los Angeles Rams. Um, and, yeah, I, I, we all know the type of playmakers they got over there. Aaron Donald, still the best, if not one of the best – or one of the best, if not the best in the league. Um, I'm on air saying Chris that Jones. Chris Jones is the best, and I'll stand by that for the entire season um, yeah. because that dude just came up with another two sacks, big-time sacks in, I mean, he's in our previous game. Um, but yeah, obviously we got to have an answer for that. We got to have an answer for, uh, a lot of the stuff that they do on defense and then, um, McVay's unique offense yep. and, uh, what they're doing, uh, on the offensive side of things. It's going to be a big time game for us, man. Well, hopefully, uh, you guys can win the game. If you score 51 points this time, man, you guys both scored 35 combined points in the fourth quarter. I might go back and watch this game because it sounds exciting. Not they actually lie. play it on 
They play it on NFL Network quite a bit. Yeah, I'm sure they do. A good it's one. a touchdown every single drive. I think Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill, might have had 200 yards and like four touch or three touchdowns or something like that. It was crazy. That's awesome. I can't believe I don't remember this game happening. All righty. Well, that wraps up the Thanksgiving episode of New Heights. 13 weeks in, baby. So make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, New Heights, so you can stay up to date with all the new videos and content. And uh, Pat Mahomes is coming soon. So all keep right an eye now. out. Keep Good an eye out. <laughs> keep an eye out next week for two episodes. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show for all the fun clips that we have for you throughout the week uh, on this wonderful Thanksgiving episode. And then shout out to our production, man. We love you guys. You guys make us look way better than we really are at this. And uh, we can't thank you enough. We're very thankful for you guys. And until next week, baby. Peace. Peace.